In case anyone doesn't know, the Zabrak are a race in Star Wars. They have such an interesting colour. Black and red, horns. Well, I think everyone has seen Darth Maul, haven't they? By the way, he's a Dathomir Zabrak, if memory serves me correctly. And yes, Dathomir is a planet known for its rankers and Dathomirian witches. Very specific young ladies who have a special relationship with the Force. As they say, nothing special. Just a typical planet in a galaxy far, far away. Hear about this very Zabrak named Darth Maul we will now talk about. Why? Well, it's just that in the Solo movie, Kira, Han Solo's ex-girlfriend, gets involved with him at the end. And that, to me, seems like a pretty good reason to talk about this character. If you watch The Hidden Menace, we know that Darth Maul killed Qui-Gon. By the way, I've always wanted to ask, why did Maul punch him in the stomach and he died immediately? As it seems to me, the Jedi could have tried to buy the whole thing somehow. For example, even with such wounds, he could have lived, well, at least half an hour, and in that time he could have been saved. But I'm not talking about him now. So, Darth Maul kills a great man Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan loses his sword. Then dangling literally on his fingertips, he draws his teacher's sword and literally halves Maul. He falls down the shaft, and we see his body split in two as he falls. And we all know that Darth Maul is dead. And as they say, dead and well... No, really, did anyone like the character? Did anyone even care about him? He was completely unrevealed. He has almost no words, just, finally, we can get our revenge. That's it. And in the Clone Wars animated series, we can see that he's alive and well, only instead of legs he has spider chassis. Then I think there was talk of him getting completely prosthetic legs. So, personally, I'd like to discuss all of this. From the question of his survival to how he was able to get prosthetic legs in the first place. But first, I'd like to say a few words about this. As you know, any movie about heroes is as good as the antagonist, the main villain of the movie. And here in The Hidden Menace, alas, everything is very, very sad. Of course, if we're talking about Palpatine, those who didn't know who he really was could see the intrigue and everything else. But if we're talking about Darth Maul, then... As I said, as the main villain, he is, alas, completely worthless. He's unrevealing. He's uninteresting. And the fact that he managed to defeat Qui-Gon only speaks to the fact that he managed to defeat Qui-Gon. In fact, the best reveal of Count Dooku, in my opinion, was the best. There, and aristocratic manners, and the actor himself tried from the heart, and in general, on Dooku really was a pleasure to watch. But Darth Maul? No, sorry, this character could not be revealed. Maybe for this reason he and decided to resurrect. First, let's talk about how he managed to survive Episode 1 in the first place. He falls down a mineshaft, and that's the end of it. Actually, the movie suggests that after the fall, there's just nothing left there, and it's said that he fell into the liquid waste from the plasma production. In fact, I'm very curious about where exactly they fought. It looked like a reactor of some sort. There's a reason there were force fields and all that. And it seems to me that after falling from such a height, even into liquid or anywhere else, it would be very, very problematic to survive. A few minutes earlier, Darth Maul stabs Qui-Gon in the stomach. He ends up dead. It's a shame about the man, really, just because he was a good man. A very good man. Then Obi-Wan soars into the air and literally cleaves Maul in half. He falls down the shaft. Question. Who had a better chance of survival? The man who was just stabbed with a sword? Yeah. Something literally burned out with that move, terrible pain and all that. Or the man who was just cleaved along the belt line. By the way, yes. The Wikipedia article says that Maul made himself mechanical legs. But Obi-Wan didn't cut off his legs, but everything below his waist. So when Obi-Wan hit him, Darth Maul lost not only his legs, but also some of his internal organs. You know, they just fell out of his body as he went down. I'm not even going to talk about the impact on the liquid waste. It was supposedly such a blow that Zabrak, even wounded, wouldn't have survived. He should have been left a mess. Of course, someone can say that Zabrak has a different organ structure than we do. He could have cushioned the fall with the Force. But still, such explanations seem a bit far-fetched. I can well make the assumption that all these explanations were invented just to resurrect the character and make money out of him. I read a bit of his backstory, and I wouldn't say it was interesting. And Darth Maul himself, and all the things he did after he survived, well, I wouldn't say interesting, except I was actually just thinking about this. Here, then, let's imagine, 
Darth Maul, or rather, what's left of him, falls into this very waste. Okay, let's believe that he didn't crash, that his organs didn't fall out, that he just landed peacefully in the waste. I'm sorry, how did he not drown? How did he get out of it? How did he even get around if half his body was missing? And I'm not even talking about the fact that he could have gotten massive blood poisoning from falling into that waste. So, of course, I understand why this character was resurrected. There were a lot of plots with him afterwards, actually, but as I think, the very idea of this very resurrection, well, not particularly good. Speaking of which, if there are those here who consider themselves fans of this character, tell me how you think he could have survived. I just don't have the imagination for it.